Welcome to another lecture by Medico Medics, Learning Made Easy. Physiology Chapter 3, Signal Transduction and Communication. So in this lecture, we will take a dive into the concept of signal transduction, why it's important, its basic steps, the types of cell receptors involved, something called second messengers. Further, we will continue talking about some different pathways, some examples of signal transduction, what happens when there is a disruption, and end with a summary. Now, why is signal transduction important? Well, it is essential for coordinating cellular activities like muscle contraction or hormonal release. It's essential for responding to the external stimuli like stress, infections. It's essential for growth, differentiation, and repair. So a breakdown in cell signaling leads to diseases like cancer or diabetes, etc. And we will discuss how that happens. So let's first cover the basic steps in signal transduction. First, we have signal reception. So a signal molecule called a ligand binds to a receptor on the cell membrane. You can see this illustrated right here. Once it has binded to the receptor on the membrane, we have signal transduction. So that signal then is converted into a cascade of intracellular events. So whatever that message was that it brought to this receptor is relayed into the cell through different steps. Then we arrive at a cellular response. So the cell performs a specific action, whatever that message was. For example, we want our cell to secrete a, a specific hormone or start replicating itself or whatever. So think of a signal transduction as some kind of a chain reaction where one, events, one event triggers another until the job gets done. And when we talk about signals, we talk about two different types. We have chemical ones, like neurotransmitters and hormones, and we have physical ones, like pressure, light, etc. Now let's dive a bit deeper into the receptors that start the process. So what kind of cell receptors do we have? Well, we have membrane receptors. These are found on the cell surface, and these bind hydrophilic ligands, like insulin. Examples of these membrane receptors include G-protein coupled receptors. These trigger intracellular signaling cascades. We have ion channel receptors that open and close channels to allow ions to flow. Ions like calcium, magnesium, potassium, etc., etc. Intracellular receptors, these are found inside the cell that bind hydrophobic ligands like steroid hormones, uh, for example, cortisol. Now, once a receptor is activated, how does it relay the signal? That's where second messengers come into play. So second messengers are small molecules inside the cell that amplify the signal. Example of, examples of these are CAMP, cyclic AMP. It activates protein kinases for phosphorylation. We have calcium ions that trigger muscle contraction or neurotransmitter release. So amplification is a single ligand can activate many second messengers, leading to a larger response. So the receptors were like doorbells. Like you, you know, click on the doorbell, you want to get in. Now second messengers are like uh, loudspeakers. They amplify the signal so the cell knows what to do. So now the message has been received. The second messengers have amplified it. Now we want to uh, instruct somehow the cell step by step to complete whatever it is we want. And that is done through different signal transduction pathways. These function like different instructions, like a recipe. So we have linear pathways where one signal activates one response. 
for example, insulin signaling glucose uptake. We have cascading pathways where there is a series of steps amplifying the signal, like the AMP kinase pathway. We have crosstalk, where there is interaction between pathways, ensuring proper coordination. For example, the insulin and glucagon pathways. Now here is an illustration of the MAP uh, kinase pathway, where we have several steps happening to amplify signals until we arrive inside the nucleus for some kind of response. Now let's explore some real-world examples of signaling pathways in action. So examples indeed could be insulin signaling, where insulin binds to its receptor. The signal then triggers glucose uptake in cells, leading to the reduction of blood sugar. So pretend this is a cell. Pretend you have a glucose molecule floating by here in the blood. It wants to get in. However, for it to get in, it needs to go through this door here. And this door only opens when insulin binds to its receptor. So we need insulin to arrive here, binding to this. When that has happened, you can pretend now that this door then opens and that leads to glucose entering the cell. Now with this little minimal understanding of it all, imagine if insulin has trouble binding to this receptor. Will glucose get in? Not as easily. Imagine if you don't, if you don't have insulin. There is no way for the door to open. And funny enough, the example where we don't have insulin at all is actually called type 1 diabetes. When we talk about problems of insulin binding to the receptor, let's say there is some kind of resistance going on, or we have uh, lower levels of insulin, for whatever reason, we know we do have insulin at some level in our body, but for whatever reason, this door is not functioning like it's supposed to, so the level of glucose still is too high in the blood. Some may get in, but not enough to maintain balance. We call this problem type 2 diabetes. Now, this is a very simplified explanation, but you get the idea. So connect this while you think about it. Connect the clinical picture to signal transduction. Another example is the fight or flight response. So adrenaline binds to um, G protein coupled receptors on our heart cells. This would increase heart rate and energy availability. Now indeed, what happens if these processes go wrong? Now, some disruptions in signal transduction. If, for example, we're talking about cancer, there is an uncontrolled cell growth due to overactive pathways. For example, mutations in growth factor signaling. Because normally, growth factors, proteins, are binding to receptors on the cell, triggering a cascade that signals our cell to divide when needed. Now, if you have mutations, right, if you have mutations in genes like an oncogene like the RAS gene, this will cause the signaling pathway to stay on instead of off, even without growth factors leading to uncontrolled cell division and tumor growth. Examples of uh, interventions, like you can see here, is uh, kinase inhibitors. These will block overactive signaling proteins, preventing excessive cell division. Another one we mentioned is diabetes, right? Where there is impaired insulin signaling causing high blood sugar. And some interventions include using giving insulin, a medication called metformin, GLP-1 receptor agonists, etc. Because normally, insulin binds to its receptor, right? Activating pathways to move glucose um, 
transporters, they're called actually, to the cell surface, leading to glucose entering the cells. So essentially, opening the door for glucose to enter the cell. Now, if we have type 1 diabetes, we don't actually have the production of insulin, which occurs in the pancreas. Um, so this signaling pathway doesn't even get initiated. But if we're talking about type 2 diabetes, cells are becoming, have become or are becoming more and more resistant to insulin. So the receptors are not responding properly. And therefore, glucose uptake gets impaired, again leading to high glucose. So we can give a medication like, for example, metformin, which improves sensitivity of cells to insulin which makes it easier for the receptor to trigger glucose uptake. And we can do, of course, insulin therapy, whereby we're just giving external insulin. If we have hypertension due to overactive stress hormone signaling, we can give the medications called beta blockers to reduce heart rate and blood pressure. So this is a direct example of signaling issues at this very basic level to clinical concerns like hypertension, cancer, diabetes, etc. as a direct correlate, directly correlating to issues at this fundamental level. So in summary then, signal transduction allows cells to communicate and coordinate functions. Steps include reception, transduction and response. Disruptions in signaling are linked to major diseases. And that's the end of chapter 3. Continue now to chapter 4.